Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. It's Friday, July 21st, and this is The Gateway. I'm Rachel Lipman, in today for Wayne Pratt. Ahead on the podcast, the St. Louis Filmmaker Showcase starts tonight at the High Point Theater. Some of the filmmakers spent years of time and effort working to bring their visions to the big screen. We built all the sets, we did all the costumes. We didn't have money, all we had was time and effort, and we put in all the effort we possibly could. St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin introduces us to three filmmakers whose works will be featured at the showcase. But first, the news. A new conservative majority governing a St. Charles County school district has revoked an anti-racism resolution approved following the murder of George Floyd in 2020. The St. Louis Post-Dispatch reports the board of the Francis Howell School District voted 5-2 last night to cancel three resolutions that were adopted by previous boards. The anti-racism resolution called racism a crisis and vowed to create a school system that, quote, specifically acknowledges the challenges faced by our black and brown students and families. The resolution's five opponents were elected over the last two cycles with the support of a Republican-backed political action committee. A Democratic lawmaker from the Kansas City area hopes to be the next leader of Missouri's House Democrats. State Representative Ashley Awney of Platt County is running to be the next minority leader in the House. Current minority leader and Democratic gubernatorial hope for Crystal Quaid cannot run for another term. One of Awney's key goals is to expand the House Democrats' presence throughout the state and make sure we're representing all voices, all interests, and and speaking to Missourians, not just in our districts, not just in in the safe areas, but across the state. Because, you know, if we're going to be more relevant in Missouri, we've got to expand our footprint. Ani was a guest on Politically Speaking. You can listen to her episode by going to stlpr.org. New estimates from the U.S. Census Bureau are painting a more complete picture of population losses across the St. Louis metropolitan area. St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt reports the region's core has seen the biggest declines since 2020. The Bureau released county-level estimates last month that, for the first time, break down the population change by age, sex, race, and ethnicity. Between April 2020 and July 2022, the data shows St. Louis and St. Louis County each shed close to 15,000 people, primarily white and black residents. Ness Sandoval is a professor of demography and sociology at St. Louis University. If we see a continued decline in the city and in the county, It's going to be very difficult for the St. Louis region to remain in the top 25 metropolitan regions over the next few years. Sandoval says there's a good chance that places like Orlando and Charlotte could eclipse St. Louis's population in the next few years. I'm Eric Schmid, St. Louis Public Radio. The Missouri Supreme Court has rejected an argument from Attorney General Andrew Bailey that he has authority over a report on the cost associated with a proposed constitutional amendment legalizing abortion. Judges agreed with Auditor Scott Fitzpatrick's claim that his office bears the responsibility of estimating and summarizing the financial impact of a proposed constitutional amendment. The court ruled Thursday, only two days after hearing the case. During oral oral arguments, the attorney for the auditor, Robert Tillman, said the attorney general can only return a fiscal note summary if it lacks the required legal content and form. The attorney general has only a perfunctory ministerial role in the fiscal note process. The court agreed, stating that the statute is clear. If the summaries satisfy those requirements, the attorney general shall forward notice of such approval to the auditor. Bailey now has 24 hours to certify the fiscal note. The St. Louis Filmmakers Showcase is an annual opportunity for independent filmmakers to show off their work, sometimes after committing years of effort to complete it. Cinema St. Louis produces the event, which begins tonight at the High Point Theater. St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin spoke with the creators of two films. Director Dovid Linder's science fiction film The Box is his second feature. He screened his first at the inaugural showcase 23 years ago. Goodwin asked Linder why it took so long to return. I wanted to do something very small with a fast turnaround. So I wrote this script called The Box, 
And someone had suggested to me, hey, you could take this concept, write a number of different stories, kind of pass the box around from story to story, mm -hmm. and then you've got a feature film. And I thought, you know what, that's a really good idea. I need to get my second feature film under my belt. And so you were right about the, the idea for the great second feature film, wrong about this being a project for a quick turnaround. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I thought it would take a maybe a year and a half to get the whole thing in the can and edited. It turned out to be 11 years. And you appear on screen in one of those self-contained segments. Yes, I do. We hear your voice, among some others, discussing a, a strange box that has just appeared in mm -hmm. the cupboard in this apartment. Yes. Basically, what the whole scenario was, dinner party, couples discover this box in the cabinet. They don't know what it is or where it came from. It causes a lot of distrust in the group. We start learning secrets about each individual person. What's the matter? I felt, I felt something move. Something in the box moved. What was that sound? It came from the box. Ow! It shocked me. So from that box creating chaos in this dinner party, yes. we get into a larger story about a sort of interdimensional infiltration of the city of St. Louis. Yes. Jeff, there was a light in Forest Park. People saw a white light. It's all over the news. Oh, but Jeff, they're here. They're here. The festival also includes the creepy period piece Somewhere in Old Missouri. That's a Western with supernatural elements. I spoke with Jackson Thomas Drago, who stars in it and wrote the music, and director Tom Boyer. They wrote the film together. Boyer says it's a meld of influences. As we just call it a supernatural Midwestern musical. Not so much in like people stand up and dance, but more of a musical and just that it is very musical. Jackson, would you talk a bit about how music is part of the storytelling? The score is all original compositions. Some of the songs performed by us in the movie is music of the time period. We are hearing renditions of old time music from the 1800s up to the early 1900s, and some of it is original music as well. Myself, wouldn't mind dying if dying was this lonesome valley. And Jackson, you play uh, one of the principal characters, someone by the name of Sweet Tooth. Now, Tom, you're on screen also as an actor. You play the sheriff. I am. The sheriff has a climactic confrontation with Sweet Tooth late in the film. What exactly do you want? Why did you come back? Wasn't one hanging enough? Not for you, it wasn't. You still got that same song stuck in your head. And you always will. This isn't one of your hillbilly sing-alongs, and this isn't your audience. We built all the sets, we did all the costumes. We shot a lot of the exterior stuff in the woods at my family's ranch, the Canagree Ranch. It's down past Montgomery City. It's the log cabin you see in the movie. And with all that land around it and the lake and the woods, we didn't have money, we didn't have resources. All we had was time and effort. So we took our time and we put in all the effort we possibly could. That was St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin speaking with filmmakers Tom Boyer, Jackson Thomas Drogo, and Dovi Blinder. The STL Filmmaker Showcase runs through July 30th. David Cosaris edited that conversation from Jeremy. Ashley Listenby is STLPR's news director. St. Louis Public Radio is a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. The music on the podcast is by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Rachel Lippman. Happy Friday, everyone. Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.